Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at goal. Joining you on what is a pretty miserable Tuesday. Arsenal losing last night at Newcastle 2 0. And uh, yeah, Champions League dream pretty much over, I would say it now, isn't it? It's not totally done and dusted yet, but I think we all know what's coming on Sunday. All Spurs need to do is win at already relegated Norwich. And if they do that, then no matter what Arsenal do against Everton, it does not matter. Arsenal had it in their grasp. They had the Champions League right there and they failed to take it. Losing at Tottenham and then losing last night at Newcastle. Five goals conceded, no goals scored in two huge, huge games. You can't really argue. Arsenal were dreadful really after the first 20 minutes at Tottenham. And uh, well, they were just dreadful all night yesterday. Probably... Probably the worst performance of the season, certainly given what was at stake. It was just really odd to see a team basically playing in a cup final, almost bigger than a cup final, given what was at stake, to perform like that. And yes, there were injuries. Yes, they were running on fumes, a lot of them. Um, Gabriel and Ben White clearly weren't fit. Tommy Asu clearly wasn't fit. He went off. Uh, Emil Smith-Rowe clearly wasn't fit. It, it, and... But even so, they, it was just such an, an inept performance. It was really difficult to watch. It was a real, real shame. And ultimately, the season's now going to end in disappointment. And that feels like a shame as well, because it's been on the whole a, a positive season. It's been a season I've really enjoyed for the majority of it. And it's just a shame that we're kind of going to head into the summer now with a bit of a dark cloud hanging over, hanging over how things have all ended. I think at the start of the season, when we should have offered everyone fifth in the Premier League, they would have taken it. And it would have been viewed as a clear sign of progress. But given how the season panned out, given how some of the other teams underperformed, given the position that Arsenal are in, it's very difficult to look at it right now in the cold light of day and not think Arsenal have let, have let a huge, huge opportunity slip through their fingers. Whether they're going to get an opportunity as good as that again in the next few seasons remains to be seen next year. They're going to have European football to consider in the Europa League, which is a positive because you want to be playing in Europe, but it means that there's going to be extra demands put on the players, extra demands put on the squad. You're going to be playing Thursday, Sunday. It's just not ideal, is it? And you look at what Tottenham now, who are going to have Champions League football with Antonio Conte, the extra finances. It's just going to make it very, very difficult next season. And that's what Arsenal have done. And that's what failure to go on and secure a top four spot has done. And it wasn't all down to last night, by any means, I sort of look back to that three um, three game period, the three losses in a row to Palace, Brighton and Southampton. And, you know, damage was done there. But for me, I go back to January. I think I said it at the time and ultimately it was all going to be judged on how Arsenal finished the season. I think I can't remember the exact quote that Mikel Arteta gave just after the window shut. But he basically said, Look, judge judge me in January, uh, judge me at the end of the season when everyone was saying, have you taken a big, big risk in January by letting Aubameyang go without replacing him? And ultimately for me, when I look at it right now and think, why didn't Arsenal get themselves over the line this season? And I just look back to January and it was that. It, was, it wasn't it was letting Aubameyang go. I, I didn't really have an issue with that because that was something that kind of just needed to happen. But to not replace him at the time, it was just such a mad thing to do it was such a huge gamble when you don't didn't have any goals in your team anyway to then to let one your main striker go and not replace him when you're chasing the Champions League I said it many times at the time and it was just a huge gamble and right now we are at the end of the season you look at it and it was a gamble that didn't pay off and ultimately that's what cost Arsenal I think you look at who scored what, what goals since then for Arsenal I think Martinelli scored once Smith Rowe might have scored one or two Odegaard scored three I think Saka's scored five and Ketia scored four but they were only in two games against Chelsea and Leeds it's just not been enough and it's, you look at what Tottenham have done since January and the goals they've scored Kane hit in form Son hit in form um, this new signings coming in and making a huge impact on the first team and, and that's a difference Tottenham strengthened in January they improved their starting 11 with two key players who have definitely improved their team Arsenal, meanwhile, weakened the squad dramatically. Pablo Mari, Callum Chambers, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, players like that, all allowed to leave. Yes, they weren't regular first-team starters, but they were still squad members. Arsenal reduced that squad massively, Bamiang especially, 
and they didn't replace him. And I think ultimately that's what cost Arsenal. You look at where they are now, you look at the injuries they've got, you look at how they've been having to play players through injuries because their squad's not been big enough. It's, it's ultimately what's cost them and that's what they're going to have to deal with now is what Arteta, Edu, the board, Kron- the Cronkies, when they all get together at the end of this season and sort of look at what went wrong and why they didn't achieve what they wanted to achieve, then ultimately they're going to have to look at themselves because I don't. you can't blame the players. The players have put absolutely everything into it. The youngsters were absolutely dead on their feet. We've seen them tail off at the end of the season. That is no big surprise, you know. Saka, you know, uh, Smith Rowe hasn't been fit since January. That's been very blatantly obvious. He's not been able to get through games at all. But he's played on. Saka's been booted left, right, and centre every game he's played. He's continued to play on. But they've run out of steam, and there's no, you know, you can't criticise them for that. They're young kids. They've never had this sort of demands on their bodies before. It was always going to happen, and that's why you needed to keep a strong squad. And um, Arsenal didn't do it. They took a risk. They went with a young inexperienced small squad and ultimately for me that's what that's what's cost them at the very key stage of the season it was really really disappointing I mean Mikel was speaking after the game last night said it's really tough normally I can sit here and I can defend the players but what we've done today it's not easy to do that Newcastle are 100 times better than us in every department from the beginning to the end and it's hard to accept but we have to accept it and that's the reality of what happened we knew what was at stake but we couldn't cope with it we didn't compete we never got in a game we put ourselves in trouble time after time we lost every duel every aspect of the game we were second best and newcastle totally deserved to win probably by a bigger margin and he's absolutely spot on none of those words are uh, he's not hiding anything it's clear but you couldn't hide anything after a performance like that because it was so so poor he was asked afterwards as well, Mikel, you know, do you regret not signing not signing anyone in January what you did? He said, we had, we did what we can and with what we were allowed to do, what we could do and the resources we had from the start of the season. The team that we are able to build is what we were able to build and it's the team that has taken us all the way here. So it's sort of reading between the lines there. He's kind of pointing towards the fact that he he didn't get what he, was wanted, what he wanted. I mean, that's interesting. He's got his press conference coming up at the end of this week probably Friday I'm sure he's going to get pushed on that a little bit more um, in terms of what exactly happened in January and why the Arsenal didn't really strengthen by the fact there he's saying he did what they were allowed to do it seems to suggest that um, uh, that they they used what was available to them and in January that kind of makes it clear there was nothing available to them we all know though that there was this long running move for Vlajevic or suspected move for Vlajevic again at the time I reported that I wasn't convinced by it because everyone had always told me that I'd spoken to that it probably it wasn't going to happen it wasn't something that was really really serious despite what was being reported but there was clearly interest there there's no doubt about it you don't there was so much noise there was something going on behind the scenes um you know and should that, that transfer materialize and it would cost an awful lot of money so you know if Arsenal were genuinely trying to trying to explore the possibility of bringing him in, even at some point even at some point in January then there was clearly some sort of money there and it's just it's just a real shame it's just a real shame I, I i've just got this kind of empty feeling in my stomach today because it was it was it was right there it was it was within touching distance and to not sort of see get the job done see it through is really really disappointing because i think it would have been so massive for the young players it would have been transformative for the, the club um you know it had gotten back to where they want to be it would have allowed a lot to them to be a lot more aggressive in this summer's transfer window it'd have been better it'd be a lot easier to keep the players that they now want to keep like guy saka you know, he looked distraught yesterday in his interview he's only got two years left on his contract that's something that's going to have to be discussed this summer if you've got the lure of champions league football it just really really helps with that because even though yes he loves the club yes he's a hail end graduate that emotional tie can only last so long at some point you're going to have to show players like saka who could go to any side and they would want him believe me he could walk into these teams walk into these squads and be competing for the very very best trophies the emotional ties of Arsenal and the Hale End can only last so long at some point he's going to want to go on and and achieve what he believes he can achieve and if he doesn't believe that's going to be at Arsenal then he's going to end up moving on and that's going to be really difficult to see that's why the Champions League was going to be so so important in showing these sort of players the young players that are there now and potential new recruits that they can come to Arsenal and achieve what they want to achieve and play at the very top level and they had such a good chance to go on and achieve that now and it just feels like it's only going to get harder 
for them to go on to do it in the following in the next couple of seasons. I know a lot of people have looked at Mikel Arteta's contract and the announcement, the timing of announcement, and felt you know that's you know did they need to do that? The, the fact is he was going to sign a new contract. Whatever happens, Arsenal were going to finish fifth. He was going to get a new contract. The club weren't going to replace him this summer. He was always going to get a new contract. So the timing to me it doesn't really matter. You could either do it then, or you could do it at the end of the season when Arsenal have. You know, like, like now, it's not gonna, it's not gonna change anything. He was always gonna get a new deal, so I don't really feel like that has much of an impact. That, and I don't, I don't buy into the fact that that's had an impact on these last two games of the season. I think what, what's impacted Arsenal, what's really sort of hurt him in these closing stages, was the injuries, was the threadbare squad, was playing players who are clearly not fit to try and get a job done and missing key players. You know, Party and Tierney, it was just a huge, huge miss to lose two players like that for the season at such a crucial stage of the season. And then to have the injuries at, at, in defence to the key players again was just massive. You know, if Arsenal would have managed to be able to keep that back four fit for the remainder of the season, Tierney, White, Gabriel and um, Tommy Asu and had party in front of him, I'm utterly convinced at this point we'd have had Champions League football secured. But it's a big if and it's all ifs and maybes. In, you know, the fact is they haven't. Tottenham have done it. They've deserved to do it because the table doesn't lie. That real big cliche, but it doesn't. And ultimately, Arsenal are going to be back in Euro Europa League. It's not a massive disaster. And this is, I know I'm sounding really downbeat at this, but it's just because it was it was just there. And, you know, it, which it's not it's not been a bad season. It's not been an awful season by any means. There's been clear signs of progress. I think when, Ar when Arteta has his full side out, Arsenal are a very, very good side. They've proved that this season. The fact is they're just not quite good enough. The squad isn't good enough to compete. And that is what cost them. But, you know, if they can improve this summer, if they can keep who they want to keep, they can go out, still be aggressive in the transfer market. They were last summer, even without Champions League football, and I expect they will be again this summer. They'll go out, they're going to have to sort out their forward line. We know that. They're going to have to bring goals into the club because goals are a real problem. It has been not just this season, for the last few years. That has to be resolved this summer. You know, the last few windows have been spent looking at midfield, looking at defence. This is the summer when Arsenal have to sort their attack out. They have to get goals in the team because they can't, keep doing what they're doing and expect to compete at the very top because they just don't score enough goals so that's going to be key granite jacker obviously came out in that interview yesterday i'm sure you've seen it it's caused a lot of uh controversy is the right word i mean gary neville's responded obviously we saw that as well but these what jacker had to say when he was asked about the performance he said he said i can't explain to you why we didn't do what the game plan was we didn't listen to the coach what happened was a disaster you don't deserve to play champions league or even europa league it's very hard to take it at the moment i don't know why we're doing what why we didn't do what the coach asked of us we were, we've been waiting six years we had everything in our hands we looked like we we're in the position where newcastle are and they were where we are he said asked if inexperience was the issue at this stage of the season he said if someone isn't ready for this game stay at home it doesn't matter your age if you're nervous stay on the bench or stay at home you need people to have the balls to come here and play it's the most important game for us we're feeling very disappointed for the people who came over sorry to the fans i don't have any other words now that has caused a lot of debate those comments i mean never waded in straight away i think he called jacker a disgrace or said he's been a disgrace i hope he hasn't he's not been i hope he's not singling out the young players there and i don't think jacker was at all i think he completely includes himself in this he's that's the kind of type of player he is and I'm not going to sit here and have a go at Granit Xhaka for coming out and talking like that because most players come out and just talk a load of rubbish in interviews. Xhaka, when he actually gives an interview, is very, very honest. And he was again last night. But I don't think he's putting blame on anyone else and pointing the finger elsewhere. I think he's fully including himself in this blame. And and he's right. When you look at what he had to say, he's absolutely right. He, Arsenal don't deserve to be in the Champions League on that performance. If you're going to, if you basically go into a match where it's all at stake and you deliver a performance like that, then you don't deserve it. And that's what he's saying. So I'm not sure Neville really needed to suddenly jump on his back and brand him a disgrace and, and all that because I don't think he's pointing the finger at anyone there. I think he's blaming himself as much as blaming everyone else. He just fully admits that on the day when the big moment arrived, Arsenal weren't good enough. And and that's just the, guy, the, the type of get, uh, bloke he is and the type of guy he is when he speaks in front of the media. So I'm not going to sit here right now and have a go at Granite Xhaka and sort of pile on like a lot of people are doing because I didn't really have any issues with what he had to say. Um, Arteta's presser, as I said, is probably going to be on Friday this week ahead of the game against Everton. Obviously, there is still one game to go. It kind of feels like the season's finished now, isn't it? But you kind of forget there is still one game to go. And you never, you never know, Norwich might go and beat Tottenham. And all this moaning, all this whining, all this miserable thoughts and feelings we've got this morning might be totally gone by next Monday. We might be celebrating Arsenal returning to the Champions League. I think we all know that's not going to happen. But hey, it's football. Stranger things have happened. 
Um, I remember not too long ago when Spurs went to Newcastle on the final day, already relegated Newcastle, and they got spanked 5-1, and Arsenal um, beat Burnley or beat someone on that final day and ended up finishing second ahead of Tottenham. So crazy things happen in football, and Arsenal just got to make sure that they can somehow bounce back and beat Everton on Sunday and then hope Norwich doing them a favour. It's a very tiny, tiny possibility, but it is a possibility. So Arsenal need to sort of stay professional now and try and get the job done on Sunday just in case uh, Spurs have a uh, bit of a mishap at Carrow Road. Doesn't look like Tommy Asu is going to play. He got injured last night, obviously. Um, real recurring theme with Tommy Asu, which has been a bit of a worry the second half of the season. He was so, so good when he arrived, but these injuries are just piling up. Every time he comes back, he seems to pick up another one. I'm not sure exactly what it is yet, but it looked like he was feeling his hamstring. And so um, he, Mikel Arteta said afterwards it's a muscular one and Arsenal and will have to assess it over the coming days but I can't imagine Tommy Asu is going to be fit for that one whether Arsenal risk Gabriel and Ben White I mean they did come through yesterday's game but they clearly weren't fit Smith Rowe limped off as well so I imagine Martinelli will be starting that game against uh, Burnley as well and the form Smith Rowe shown recently I wouldn't you know I don't think anyone's going to complain about that too much could be a final game for a few of the players I think uh, Nicolas Pepe <laughs> performance his cameo when he came on last night was an utter disaster um, I, it could well be his final game in an Arsenal shirt at the weekend. Again, I've said it before, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Granit Xhaka's final game in an Arsenal shirt at the weekend. We'll have to wait and see if that move to Roma does materialise this summer like it nearly did last summer. Um, so it could be the final time to see a few of these Arsenal players in an Arsenal shirt. We'll have to wait and see on that. But for now, everyone, thanks for watching. Sorry this has been a pretty miserable video. Uh, it's very difficult to be upbeat after a performance and a night and a result like that but enjoy the rest of your Tuesday the sun is shining so there is something to celebrate today go out enjoy yourself soak up that sun try and forget about football for a bit and I will join you later on in the week thanks for watching